Hello and welcome to the Jim Baker Family Show. Coming to you from the village of Morningside, USA, snuggled in the beautiful Ozark Mountains. Today we have a special message from evangelist Perry Stone. Our co-hosts today are Marcella Woodall and Mondo De La Vega. And now, live from Gray Street at Morningside, USA, here's your host, Ricky Baker. Hello, you're watching Jim Baker's PTL Television Network. We are glad you chose to tune in with us today. I have with me, Jacqueline Baker. Jacqueline, how are you doing, buddy? Good. Good. Jacqueline, can you tell the people how old are you? You just celebrated a birthday last Friday. Now, how old are you, buddy? Four. She's four, four years old. Four years old, and we already love Jesus. You know, the Bible says, Mondo, uh, train a child in the way they're supposed to go, and when they're older, they will not depart from it. <laughs> you guys have been great examples, Marshall. I've seen your children really independently praying for each other, yes, loving each other, talking amen. about Jesus. I've seen your children, too. Your son, I mean, in, a, in a secular world of sports, he's out there saying, hey, coach, I want to pray for people before the yeah. games. It's all about training your child up in the way they're supposed to go. And when they're old, yes. their heart will know Jesus Christ Amen. is the only Amen. way to yes. heaven. It's important. You know, Ricky, I love that. And Mondo, too. You know, we I know we've had moments of sitting and talking and realizing, God, how awesome and incredible as God is. And I believe that this is a word for someone who's even watching. You know, when you, we didn't have access to that oftentimes growing up in the lives that we grow up in, grew up in. But the reality of it is as you get older and as you realize that now you, God has given us a new opportunity, a new opportunity that maybe sometimes we didn't even have to instill the Lord and his promises and who he is, his commandments into children from the time that they're born. You know, so I look at it, Mondo, you and I were having this conversation yesterday. I'm like, Lord, what a great honor and a privilege it is that whatever it is that the enemy meant when we were being raised and the hardships that we had growing up in our teens and our youth and our journey to find Jesus, now as parents who love the Lord, we're able to now instill that in our children. And that's a great honor. And I say that that's encouragement for anyone who's watching because maybe you find yourself, maybe you're a grandparent, maybe you're a, a young parent like us who's raising children right now in a very, very dark world. We see it all around us, but there is the hope that we still have a chance to raise up this generation. And it starts with our homes. It starts yeah. with how are we creating that foundation? Do we openly speak and pray and allow Allow our children to see examples. You know, one day John and I were sitting there and we we're talking and I said, you know, John, you know, we we're talking about the Holy Spirit and we we're talking about Acts on how the Holy Spirit came and he fell upon the people and they began to speak in different languages and the Holy Spirit began to literally shake this world with fire and power. And I told John, I said, how will our kids ever you know, because you, a lot of times when you're in your prayer time, you go, you kind of, it's kind of crazy when you're raising kids. So sometimes you kind of go away and you go into your prayer closet or you go for a drive or you go different places just to say, okay, Lord, I need to hear from you. I need this just peace or quiet. But you know, I told John, I said, sometimes it's in the chaos. It's in the middle of good chaos when kids are running around, when they're playing, when that just putting on that worship and allowing them to see the Holy Spirit, allowing them to hear you speak in tongues and allow the Holy Spirit to oh, operate so right. through to you. That's how they learn. Well, they, they have to They have to have the example. Yes. So I understand, hey, you know, go get into your prayer yeah, closet, pray alone, but also pray in front yes. of your children. Pray where they can see you. you. You know, it was just yesterday, I was sitting, yes, ma'am? She said, Daddy? Daddy, can I have a hug? Can I have a hug? Yes, you can have a hug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yesterday, I, I was just sitting with Jacqueline. You know, uh, she got in trouble for something. It's okay. You know, kids yeah, do things. Plan. And as I was explaining to her, hey, the reason that we obey, and this is what I was telling her, yes. you know, mom and dad tell you to do stuff because we want you to be obedient. Yes. Obedience doesn't have, uh, you know, anything to do with us. We want you to eventually say yes to the Lord. We want you to say yes to Jesus. And as I'm telling her the fundamentals of, hey, this is why we do what we do, I'm actually ministering to myself saying, okay, obedience in this day that we're living in is yeah. more crucial than anything. So I was telling her, hey, that's why we remain obedient. That's why whenever we do something, hey, let's do it the first time yeah. because obedience is critical. So as I'm explaining to this, my four-year-old daughter, I'm getting convicted in my heart yeah. saying, you know what? First time obedience believer is critical yes, for us. Amen. The first time, yes, is critical for us. Because even in the same capacity that a small child may say, hey, well, I have a better way in my mind that I want to do this. Or I have a way that I think is more profound than the Lord, which in our ignorance, sometimes we do. 
first time obedience, Mondo, is better than sacrifice. Yes. You know, I think about the way I'm raising my kids with my wife. Yeah. Growing up without a parent, um, you would like to parent the way you yeah. wanted to be parent. Right. And one of the things you can't forget is compassion towards your kids. Yes. Compassion doesn't mean that you allow them to walk all over you, mm -hmm. but compassion to help them understand how to develop, how to communicate. Most parents are frustrated today and they lash out and screaming and spanking and all that. And there's times for that. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you know, a generation today doesn't listen by the words you're speaking. They listen by how you act and how the, listen, the thing is, we are a mirror of our kids and how we respond to them is how they're going to react to what we're trying to communicate mm -hmm. with them and allowing them to understand that transparency is so key. That's right. And allowing them to see when you're hurting, allowing them to see when you're praying and believing in, in faith and compassion and love. Yes. You know, the thing at the end of the day that the Bible talks about narrow is the way that's right and few who be who and find you have that. to understand that narrow is the way to love mm. love is narrow because love calls you to be kind to be patient man it's hard to be patient when kids aggravate you and they push you and they come to continuously continue They're to testing. do that's right the testing and all <laughs> yeah. that but at the end of the day we have to have love and compassion towards to the kids that we're trying to raise Yet narrow is that moment. And, but I can tell you that how they respond to what they see in front of them is the results of how they're going to be in public. Yesterday, the Lord really put this on my heart. So it's pretty amazing how we're talking about this because yesterday the Lord led me to Hebrews 12 in my time with him. And he was talking about, you know, this isn't just for young children. We're speaking from our experience of having children right now. We're in the season but we are sons and daughters We're of children Jesus. Of God. We're That's children right. of God. And so when you read Hebrews 12, it's talking about the, the discipline of the Lord. And if you start at verse seven, it says, endure discipline. God is dealing with you as his sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? If you are without discipline, of which everyone has partaken, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Amen. The word saying you're not a son then if you do not adhere and, and endure the discipline of the Lord, you are then he can't call you a son and a daughter. He can't correct you then. Furthermore, I'm going to continue. Furthermore, we have had human fathers and they corrected us and we gave them reverence. We gave them respect because they corrected father. us. Amen. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed disciplined us for a short time according to their own judgment. But he, talking about Jesus, he does for our profit that we may partake of his holiness. I love that the Lord saying is when the Lord disciplines his children, which is you and I, no matter what age you are, we are Amen. children of God. Then the outcome is we partake in the holiness of God. He puts us on that straight and narrow path to become holy like he is. Amen. And it continued to say, idea. now no, now no discipline seems to be joyful at the time, Amen. but grievous. Yet afterward, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness in those who have been trained by it. And so that's a word Praise for all God. of us, regardless of our age. Like I said, we're talking about Jacqueline. We're talking about Jackson, our children. But what the Lord is saying to us is we are, if we want to be called le legitimate sons and daughters of the king, then we have to endure discipline. And though it may be hard sometimes, though it may be difficult to endure that time, it's truly the love of the Lord. As he said, I want you to be holy. I want you to be righteous and to live a righteous life like I do. Amen. I want you to endure that you may have joy. You may have the fruits that I have come to give you. But that comes sometimes from a time of discipline Absolutely. with the Lord. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're enduring through something that's difficult, it seems hard. It seems like, Lord, I know many times I sit there and I say, I look at the world and I'm like, God, why are they allowed to get away with what they get away with? And yesterday, yesterday the Lord showed me, he's like, this is why, because the world, the people of the world 
they have not become legitimate sons and daughter mm, of my kingdom. Word. And so I want to encourage you that as you're going through this time, endure it, press into God, allow God to say, hey, Lord, if there's anything within me, Lord, bring purity, bring holiness to this situation, and God will do just that. That's right, he will. You know, believer, uh, forgiveness is our best weapon. We must continue to do that for one another because we will fall, but believer, we must get back up and continue, like Marcella said, pursuing righteousness, whether you're eight or you're 88. Yes. The Bible says, be holy because I am holy. That's the word of God, friend. It's so important for us to be holy because he is holy. You know, Mondo, uh, through the last couple years, 2020 was a, uh, a pivotal year for this ministry where we had seen attacks come on this ministry. But what did we choose to do as a collective yes. whole to press into the face of God, even like at times like children, yes. like small children saying, God, you know what? We are standing on faith saying that if you have brought us here, you will sustain us to yes. the end. I said something the other day, believer, but I need to say it again for you watching. We sometimes think we're sitting in the lion's den and we're saying, well, God, you must not care about me. Friend, he never promised to spare you from the lion's den, but he promised to spare you from the Amen. lion. He yes, might not have promised right. to spare you from yes. the fiery Thank furnace, you, but believer, you will walk right. out without the fringe of your jacket smelling Thank like smoke. Jesus. Believer, he is there for you. He's your friend. He's your comforter. We have the Holy Spirit, an intercessor that sits on the right hand of yes. uh, next to God, which is Jesus Christ. We have all of those assets around us. All we have to do is say yes. Thank First you. time obedience. That's the word the Lord is telling me today. Thank it's you. someone watching today that the Lord's telling you to do something and Thank the you. Lord doesn't want to have to tell you to do it again. First time obedience, friend. Amen. This is going to be the thing that changes the course of your life. Yes. First time obedience is what I believe the reason the PTL television network is still here. Yes. Because we chose first time obedience every time. Yeah, you know, and honoring that, God honors the yes. God honors yes. the faithfulness. A lot of times we make our decisions based on the circumstances that are going on in our lives. Amen. But I, I heard a man years ago say, don't base your faith on the circumstances yes. of your life. Instead, let the let your faith change the circumstances of right. your life. Like a mustard right? seed. Come so on. when you understand that the circumstances that we were facing yeah. looked impossible. Right. And there are moments that will look impossible. Yet when God says, I want you to do this, be obedient yes. to it because sometimes you feel alone. That's right. You're broke. Come on. How many of yes. you have been broke? <laughs> you don't right. have the resources. Amen. You don't have the name. You yes. don't have the platform. Yet it's not even about that. It's about God will provide every need yes. when we are obedient to him. And in the middle of that crisis, we were obedient to yes. birth the PTL television network to give a platform for the voices of the prophets yes. to help us understand what it means to find what lawlessness is all about. Find out what the Bible says about Israel in these times that we're in right now. But it was based on the obedience in the middle of one of the highest crises of this ministry. You were part of that miracle. Yes. You see, the miracle takes place when two of you agree, the Bible That's says. That's right. And Amen. Matthew 18, 19 talks about the agreement of the two of them. And in the middle of that, the Holy Spirit says, hey, I see unity in that. I, I want in. Amen. Because once he gets involved, the revelation and the vision takes place. Yeah. And now you see in the fruits of the fulfillment of the obedience. Yes. That's right. There's fruit. Yes. Anytime God calls you to obedience, what is the sign that you have followed his obedience? It's fruit. the fruit. Yes. That's right. Amen. The tree and if will you're bear bearing fruit, fruit yes. then you know that the obedience that you set out to do will flourish, and now it's time to harvest yeah, that. Man. We want to continue to broadcast the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. We want to bring you the best revelation teachers we possibly can, which we are dedicated to continuing to do, and we are wanting to uh, make sure that the gospel is uncensored and unfiltered. Mondo, we are noticing a trend where people come to the PTL television network and they say, I had recently done an interview at another station and God bless them, but they say, but I was told I couldn't talk about X, Y, and Z issues. We want to bring you a raw and unfiltered version of the gospel where if the Bible says it, then we will support Amen. it because this is our foundation. Right. Our opinion doesn't matter. We have no opinion. We simply have the word of God. How did Jesus defeat the devil? He said, it is written. And friends, yes. that is all we are called to do. When you're watching this broadcast, know that we are saying, hey, you know what? Our opinion's great. That's out the window. We are not going off our opinion. We are saying, let's go back to Thank what the Lord. word of God says. And if the word of God says a believer, it is our religious freedom here in the United States of America that we can cling to this, Amen. that we can love this. Why? Because God gave 
gave us this book that we can be in partnership with him. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I, I really feel this right now. I believe that there is a, a, a group of people out there who are wanting to donate to this. Um, I did the math. We need in this 2,000 people to give a $500 gift. That'll get us to the mark of what we need to continue to expand the gospel of Jesus Christ through the PTL Television Network. I'm gonna give the first $500. I wanna be the first person to get this done. I'm gonna give the first $500 in this, but we need now 1,999 other of you to stand with us today and say, I want to see the gospel of Jesus Christ through the PTL Television Network broadcast around the world. And I want to say thank you in advance because I know the Lord is talking to you right now. I know the Lord is pulling on the strings of your heart and you are sowing that seed to this ministry today. I want to be the first person to sow that seed and I want to say thank you in advance because I know you are going to be faithful to saying yes if the Lord is prompting you to do this. Pray about it. Stand with our ministry today as we bring you some of the best Bible prophecy teachers in the nation like the one we're going to watch today. There is a critical message from Perry Stone. And I want you guys to listen to this. If you don't know who Perry Stone is, he is an evangelist, the founder and president of the Voice of the Evangelum Outreach in Cleveland, Tennessee. He is one of America's foremost experts on Bible prophecy and the host of Manifest. That's a weekly television program which airs here on the PTL television network, The Voice of the Prophets. That's Sunday mornings at 9.30 and Sunday nights at 10.30 p.m. We want to play this video for you. This is a critical message, friend. If you have a notebook, please get it out. If you have this on record, make sure you watch it a few times. This will be the third time I am watching this message. This is one of the most critical messages I have heard for this day today. I want you to watch this with us, friend. Well, Jim and Lori and family, thank you for allowing me the opportunity. I would love to be there with you in person. As you know, you're one of my favorite people to go on a telecast with, especially when we're taping down there in the beautiful Ozark Mountains. But you asked me to share with the people through a special teaching about what I see related to the recent Iranian attack on the nation of Israel. Now, if you watch the news when the attack was taking place, people were saying this is, a, this is an unprecedented moment. And the reason that it is unprecedented, meaning nothing quite like this has happened before, is that Iran has always used what we call proxies in order to attack the nation of Israel. For example, most of the terrorist attacks that happened in Israel, in fact, I would dare say all of them that have happened inside of the country of Israel over the past several years that came through groups in the West Bank or the Gaza Strip were predominantly supported by Iran's, by Iran's mullahs or by Iranian money. Now, the Israelis don't show a lot of pictures of this, but they are finding stashes of, gold, of, of silver, just silver bars, just, just, I don't even know, the tons that they have found. When they've gone into these tunnels, they have found money, of just all sorts of money, including, including Israeli money and American money. And this money was used, of course, to, to, uh, to barter for weapons and to give to families. When a person, for example, let's say from Gaza, a terrorist from Gaza would be a suicide bomber, the family would receive, uh, I can't remember the exact amount, I know one family received $50,000 uh, because that their son was a suicide bomber. And a lot of that money is laundered uh, from the area of Iran uh, into that particular country. And they use, they actually have different banks that they can get money out of. And I don't want to get into all that. That kind of bogs down the details of what I'm wanting to share. So they have used uh, the, their proxies of Hamas in the Gaza Strip, their proxies of 30 to 40,000 uh, Hezbollah, um, militia in the north, uh, out, out of Lebanon and also out of Syria, predominantly headquartered in Damascus. And so what they have done is they have tried to keep their own um, country secure from an attack on it, from Israel uh, by using proxies. And so if Israel were to attack them after all these proxies have been used, they would say it was an unjustified attack uh, Israeli aggression, Israeli, you know, this, it would be propaganda. Well, what they recently did really altered the situation because the drones, the missiles, and the other um, flying missiles that were sent into 
Israel changed the entire situation. Now, the situation that Israel finds itself in now is really, really precarious for the following reason. If you were to continue the war in Gaza, which they appear to be going to do, you have military troops that are going to be activated there with tanks and military equipment. Then you have the North, which Hezbollah claims that they have a total, and I honestly don't doubt this number. They're in storage in warehouses and warehouses just all over the place. 150,000 possible missiles that could come into Israel. Now, it doesn't mean they can launch those all at one time. You have to have the equipment for the launches. So, you know, that's a part of it. Israel really knows from their intelligence where most of these places are. Some of these places, as you have learned in the Gaza Strip, uh, they put military equipment and they put missiles and grenades and guns in hospitals, in schools, in mosques, because they know that normally Israel does not, would never attack a mosque or a school or a hospital and bomb it because of the innocent people that would be killed in it. So they're, they're aware of that. They've been aware of that for many, many years. So what has happened now is Iran as a nation has opened itself up to an Israeli retaliation. Now, Israel can retaliate several different ways, and I want to share those with you. One is they can retaliate with cyber attacks. We do know for a fact that Israel has been behind numerous cyber attacks in Iran in the past. So there could be a massive cyber attack. This, the one thing Israel's concerned about is their nuclear program, the Iranian nuclear program of getting a nuclear bomb. And so the second area of which Iran is very concerned is that their nuclear facilities would come under some heavy type of missiles or bombing by Israel. And of course that can be dangerous because of nuclear radiation leaks. The other way that Israel can eventually attack is to have limited attack on the facilities, what we would call the military bases or the facilities where the drones and the missiles are located. Of course, that would be massive explosions, but that is a limited attack where you don't attack, you know, 300 to 400 sites. You take maybe 10, 15 or 20 key sites and attack them. Uh, that's possible as well. Now, many years ago, and I think I wrote this in my book on the vision, but many years ago, I did see something very strange happen in which I saw um, and I don't want to go into the entire detail. It's too lengthy to go into, but it was a vision. It was not a dream. It was an actual vision. But I did see nuclear cooling towers spinning, forming tornadoes, meaning a problem. And I saw two of them. So there was at least two in this vision. Uh, I saw where uh, radiation had been released, where the trees were dying, wherever this was. Uh, they were they were located off of the water. I did see that. And I saw where the bulls, which represent the stock market, were just running like crazy. And the bulls were running, which to me would imply a bull market would, the bull market would crash and, and the stocks would go under. So I saw that. Then, uh, many years later, I saw what looked like the storage facilities for oil, the storage, the storage facility for oil, something uh, similar that you would see in Houston, Texas, or in Texas off the coast there in one of our oil states. But I knew this was foreign. I knew it was. And I saw something cracking, a crackling sound. And I looked up in the air and something had gone off in the atmosphere. It did not destroy the buildings, but it, it, it produced a bluish, uh, electrical, uh, I can't even describe it. It's almost like lightning, but it wasn't naturalized. This was caused by a weapon. And in the, in this, in this, uh, kind of a dream vision, it was like an electromagnetic pulse. And I knew that they were going to knock out the electricity of this entire area to where it would put them behind for months and months and months. And I do know that Israel could use, uh, two weapons that they have. And I will not name those because I think that really when, um, I think the world knows it. I think military people know it, but I try to stay away from that, that world of things I do know. But there's two weapons that they could use, which would be very effective. But when you, anytime you affect uh, electrical grids or electrical power, what you have there is not just the electrical power of a base or maybe oil, but you have the electrical power of homes, of people. And, um, you know, not being able to cook, not being able to refrigerate, not being able to get fuel. And the last thing that I know that, that I would want, Americans would want, uh, 
even our military would want is for a lot of very innocent people, which you see that in Gaza actually, that get caught in the middle of something that is a military campaign. And the people that suffer the most are usually very poor people and children, and none of us want that. I don't care what religion a person is, what background they are, whether they're uh, Muslim, Christian, Jew, whether they're, uh, uh, or even a, you know, an unbeliever. <laughs> we want people to be able to have a good life and a happy life. So we don't want anything to happen in that realm, although we know from Scripture these things are going to happen and these things are going to take place. People have asked me, do you believe that this is Ezekiel 38 and 39? So let me explain why everybody is talking about the Battle of Gog of Magog. You've uh, talked about it, Jim. I've talked about it. Others have talked about it. All the prophecy preachers are talking about it. And it is found by uh, two, in two chapters that the prophet Ezekiel wrote about in Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39. What this battle is, it is a coalition of nations, and it so happens that all the nations alluded to here that have these older names, and some of them have the same name that the prophet talked about, are predominantly Islamic nations, and in these nations now, there are many radical Muslims, and this is why this is important to understand in the context of what Ezekiel wrote about the War of Gog and Magog. Chapter 38, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord, because I am against you, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, I will turn you. Now watch this. I will turn you back, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you forth with a great company and a great army. Now, please notice how this is worded. Now, let me keep reading, and then I'll go back to that. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters and all of his bands, many people with them will ascend like a cloud, verse 9, cover the land with all your bands and many people with thee. Now, let me stop right here and go back to Persia. It, Persia is the first nation mentioned in this coalition. Now, the, re, the thing you've got to understand is, what is Persia? It is absolutely 100% Iran. Iran is a more contemporary name for what was known in the Old Testament as Persia, and Persia is the actual territory of Iran today. So when you talk about the Iranians, you're talking about the Persians. In fact, a lot of people in Iran call themselves Persians instead of Iranians, because again, Iran, Iranian, the, an Iranian person is a more contemporary name. The Persian is the ancient historic cultural name. So we could say today, Iran, Ethiopia and Libya. Then Gomer is believed to be in the area of Germany and Austria. It's, it's a part, it's a central area in Europe. All his bands, the house of Tagarma, that would probably more than likely because of Meshach and Tubal connection, be Turkey, all right? And the North Quarters would be the nations north of Turkey, which would be the Southern Russian states that are predominantly Islamic. Many people with you coming down as a cloud against Israel. So the reason everybody is really concerned and talking so much prophetically about the war that's taking place is because of the name Persia and how we've always known that Iran and Persia would be a part of this war. Now, here's what's interesting. If you go back to ancient Persia in the time of Esther, they were very friendly toward the Jews. In fact, when the, the, it was the Medes and Persians that overtook Babylon and gave the Jews permission to, to go back from Babylon to Jerusalem to Judea, gave them the treasures of their temple back, and they were very friendly to the Jews. In fact, all the way up into the time of what was called the Shah of Iran, who was the leader of, it was a monarchy, the leader of Iran until 1978-79, right in there when there was an Islamic revolution, Jews lived in Iran, and Jews had many Iranian friends or Persian friends. Persia, was, Persia historically has been very friendly to the Jewish people, except in 79 and 80. And if you'll remember, the U.S. Embassy was attacked, was not attacked with bombs, but it was, uh, they tore the fence down, got in there, and they took all the hostages, American hostages, under Jimmy Carter for 444 days. And that's why Jimmy Carter lost the election. He lost the election because the economy was in shambles, interest rates were high, and he didn't, he couldn't do anything with, 
with, with the Iranians to release the hostages. So Ronald Reagan was elected president. And I know, Jim, uh, you were very connected to President Reagan. You were very close to him. And you even wrote on Air Force One several times. And I think you may have even wrote on it when information was released about the hostages being released. Let me tell you, Jim Baker's got some stories he probably hadn't told everybody that somebody needs to hear about his history of what God has used him in that are abs in is absolutely incredible. So uh, let's go back into this. So when we see in 79 that the Persia or Iran becomes anti-Israeli, anti-Jew, anti-Western, and it has been so since 1979 and 80. Now, let me stop and put up a stake right here. But, you know, we're going to drive a stake here. The common people of Iran, and I'm talking about 70%. I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little conservative. I'm, I'm not going to say 80. I want to say 70. 60 to 70% of the people, let's just go ultra, ultra conservative here do not like the mullahs or the imams or the leaders that are radical, anti-West, anti-Israel. And I know this for a fact because I know people there that live there. They can't speak against them because they get arrested and put in jail or they get tortured. So the younger generation of 30 and under in Persia or in Iran would love to have a complete government change and they would like to go back to the type of uh, not necessarily a monarchy, but the type of leadership they had under the Shah, which was uh, freedom how they dressed, freedom of where they could go, freedom of you know worship or whatever it was that they had. They would like to go back to that. But the strict Shia Islamic Sharia law is making it impossible for those 30 and under to be able to go back to that particular uh, lifestyle. And having said that, I want to go back and, and tell you that we now we have not Iran using their proxies. We have Iran using weapons out of their own country from their missile silos and from, from the drone factories, etc. Plus, you know, in Yemen, plus there was some coming in from Lebanon and Syria. So it was, it was everybody together in this recent attack. But the changer was shooting missiles or drones flying from the country of Iran itself. Never happened like this before against Israel. It's always a proxy war. Now it's, now it's a Iran-Israel conflict. Why is that important? Because it will lead to Ezekiel 38. But let me make this very clear to all your viewers. This is not in any way, shape, or form the war of Gog and Magog. And I see people that don't really understand. Now, I've been preaching Bible. I have a hundred, not bragging, but just to know my resume. I have a hundred, over 170,000 hours of personal Bible study, and that is no exaggeration in 48 years. And I have studied prophecy heavy for about 40 of those years. And you have people on YouTube channels and other things just coming on and they're just basically creating a thumbnail to get people to watch their channel. War of Gog and Magog, right around the corner, War of Gog and Magog. It is not. And let me tell you why it's not. Because the only places that are now involved in what has happened recently are Gaza, and there were no missiles sent from Gaza to my knowledge, but you have the Houthis, which are from Yemen. Yemen is not even mentioned here, not even close, not even in that area in the war of Gog and Magog. So Yemen's involved now, which means something's going to happen to Yemen. And I believe eventually Israel or someone is going to go down there and just blow their military apart. I'm not talking about killing people, but I'm talking about the equipment, the, the uh, warehouses, the drone places, just, just do away with it because Yemen's not even mentioned here. And Yemen was a different name, of course, back in the time of Ezekiel. It would come under a different name, but we would be able to use that name and trace it back to Yemen. It's not there. The other thing is Libya at this point is not involved in this war. Ethiopia is not involved in this war. Gomer and Turkey are not involved with this war. This is a proxy war with Iran, with Israel. Now, is it going to lead to this? Yes. It is not there now. It's not even close to being there now, okay? So here's what I want to show you. I, want to sh I was looking at this the other day, and God is talking about this Gog of Magog, the chief prince, and it's, there's a spirit behind this. That chief prince is actually a demonic entity or demonic power, but watch what it says here. And I will turn you back and put hooks in your jaw and bring you down. Now this turn you back is a very interesting phrase because to me what it indicates is that God is going to see them attack or come toward Israel 
But instead of a full scale, scale out, just full scale war, he will turn them back. Now, why does he turn them back? Because Persia by itself knows they can't defeat Israel. If, is, if Israel even has a halfway coalition, they can't defeat it with their weapons. They can't defeat them in the air. Now, listen to me very carefully. They cannot defeat them in the air. It's never going to happen. Syrian pilots, some of them, only a handful, by the way, escaped to Israel and have told the Israeli Air Force, nobody wants to fight you guys. Everybody is afraid of you. Everybody. Whether back in 67, it was the Jordanian Air Force, the Egyptian Air Force, the Syrians, everybody's afraid of you. So they're not going to win in the air. They're not going to win in an air war. All right. Now, 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 now track with me here. But he's going to, there's going to be something happen where it looks like this battle and God will stop it and turn him back. But then he says, I'm going to put hooks in your jaws. Now, let me, let me speculate. Let me speculate about what a hook in the jaw is. God didn't say, I'm going to put a rope around your neck, pull you down, a yoke around your neck, and pull it down, a, a, a ring in your nose, and pull it down. He could have said any of these phrases, but he said a hook in the jaw. Now, the jaw is where we talk, and it's where we eat. And if, and I want everybody to pay attention, because Jim might play this back months from now and say, listen to what Brother Perry said. If nuclear facilities are attacked in Persia, and the wind is blowing the wrong way, it will blow on the land, and you'll have the Chernobyl effect that Russia had where the land around the area is totally polluted and completely useless for food. And if Persia, they have so many people that if there is anything with radiation, even chemical, that could get in the soil that, that destroys the food supply, that will be the hook in the jaw because Israel, good gracious, you talk about a land that has farms and food and underground water, Israel has it. They feed their whole population and send out just uh, crates and crates and crates of vegetables and fruit all around the world because Isaiah 27 said Israel would blossom and fill the world with fruit, and they are. So Israel has a food supply that that whole part of the world doesn't have. And all along that Jordan Rift, which is the Jordan River on the Jordanian and on the Israeli side is food. Now that might be why when the Battle of Gog and Magog takes place. It happens in the Bashan, which is the northern area, the border of Lebanon and the border of Syria. But all of that, once you get past the mountains, is farmland where there's food. Then it says on the Valley of the Passengers on the east of the sea, these, these troops will be there. Why there? Because that's the Jordanian side, and it's nothing but miles and miles of lush farming, farms, food. The hook in the jaw will be food, which implies, not direct in Scripture because nuclear weapons didn't exist back then, but it implies that something could happen in that territory, it could, it, you know, where, where, the per, where Persia is, that they're going to have to have food. And I do know locusts hit there a while back. I do know there were some other problems. There was a wheat rust that hit there. And they have, they have tens of millions of people in population. And again, some of those Persians are great, wonderful people. I mean that sincerely, but it's the leadership. You know, isn't that the way it is everywhere? It's not the common people. They're the ones that's got sense. It's the leadership. Everywhere you go, it's the leadership that's got the problems. Okay, so food's going to be an issue, in my opinion, of the two areas where Gog and Magog will occur. But what I really want to show you that I felt like the Lord put in my spirit is, is very important. This is the most important part of what I can say to you. This is the most important part of what I can tell you. After, and I almost think that this Iranian deal was just a test to see could, what, how would Israel respond and how many missiles can you get in. Here's what you've got to understand. It is a long way from where Tehran is to where Israel is. And I don't have the exact miles, but it's hundreds and hundreds and possibly 1,500, 2,000 miles. I don't know the exact, I don't want to say and get the number wrong, but it's a long way. When they shoot missiles or drones, they do not land, like in Gaza, it may take five minutes to land in Israel. It may take three minutes. It's not that way with Iran. It takes a long time. Remember the news kept saying, now we don't know when they're going to arrive. We, we know they were shot. It's going to take a while. It's going to take an hour to get there because they go at a certain speed. Okay, so with Iran's present weaponry, 
It is impossible. They have just found out you will never send all those. Okay, look, if you send in 1,500 missiles at once, okay, let's say you did that, then you've done, you've done, you've done away with all your missiles. If you keep shooting them in from there and they keep getting shot down, you're going to do away with thousands of missiles. Here's what Iran found out in one night. We will not be able to, at least in the next couple years, attack Israel and win by the air. Between the equipment that Israel has on the ground to shoot down missiles, the equipment the United States has provided in Jordan to shoot down drones and missiles, the equipment in Gaza, the equipment in Lebanon, and there's a lot of it. There's the arrow, there's the uh, uh, David sling. There's actually three, three or four different types of, of weaponry that can be used. There can, there's even lasers being developed, and I won't get into that. But my point is they will never be able, I'm talking about Libya, Ethiopia, Persia, Turkey, not going to win. You're not going to beat Israel by air. So this is why they come on foot. It is a ground war. Ezekiel 38 and 39, without a doubt, is a ground war because it says they come like a cloud to cover the entire land. And they come two areas, the Bashan or the Golan Heights, which is the border of Lebanon and Syria. That's all Israeli border through there. They come like a... I mean, they come that way. So it means that eventually the Persians would have to march through Iraq and then Syria and make their way into the land, also Lebanon, all through there. And that means that Hezbollah, with their 40,000, 30 or 40,000, if they're not annihilated in a future war, they will have to come across the border, okay? And so their idea will be this. This is what the idea will be. We're going to come on different, by different methods and overwhelm the Israeli army. Now, I was looking at statistics that if Israel takes their reserves and their military that they presently have, and, and, and this is, I hope this is right because I read this yesterday, there's between 700, 800,000 people. Now, there would be Jewish people, no doubt, that would join them from the United States, from France, from Germany, which they're doing now but on the ground. Now, the Persians and the Syrians and the Libyans and all these other people that would be involved with this war, they would have millions, millions that would attack Israel. But God in this war supernaturally defeats them. Now, I do believe there will be some type of weapon because Many of those uh, radical Islamic nations do have chemical weapons. They do have some form, or they're develop, developing them. And North Korea is developing them and, and can purchase from North Korea. They do it all the time. So the reason I say that is because when the battle is finished, it says that they will wait seven months before they bury the dead because the land is polluted. They will put up a sign where there is a skeleton and hire people. This is all in the Bible. Israel will hire people to go into the Golan Heights to gather the skeletons and to d d d dispose of them, and there'll be seven years in burning weapons. Now, that seven years is interesting because there's a seven-year tribulation and a seven-year treaty made. Come on, somebody. I mean, so this is, the, the Gog and Magog is the battle. That's the one everybody needs to have their eye on eventually. But where we're at right now is they have to build a, military on ground coalition and that's going to take time to do now it's interesting that libya and ethiopia are in northern africa so this means they would have to go through either by boats or you know uh in the in the in the red sea area they would have to either come that way uh and there's a lot there's still a little bit of mystery of their involvement mystery of their involvement and would they as the ground troops are coming north in this direction, would they from the south send in missiles from those countries? Again, here we go. That's, that's yet to be seen. My point is that if you take all of this I'm just looking at, and you say to yourself, is this the war of Gog and Magog? It is not. Gog and Magog still has a way to go for it to be the way the prophet has alluded to here. Now, if Israel would, would, would retaliate massively, then you would have all these, which is Ethiopia, Libya, 
uh, Tagarma, the north, north, southern part of Russia, which is the north of Tagarma, you would have all these Islamic nations just uprising and saying, let's, let's get a military together. Let's eliminate the Jews at one time. And I believe, but here's the thing you got to understand about this battle. God sends volcanic eruptions. God sends an earthquake. It says the mountains will shake. God sends uh, fire from heaven. I mean, that's, that's, that could be a volcanic eruption or it could be military. But God will defeat Gog and Magog and these nations. And five-sixths of the army of men are totally annihilated and totally destroyed. Now, think about that. So, Jim, I hope this has helped your audience. I hope it's helped the people that watch. And I appreciate you guys so much. We look forward to coming and being with you in the future. And I want to encourage people, please, please, this network is so important. It is more important now than in history. So send this network an offering of some kind. Just cut a check, just whatever you feel, $10, $20, $50, $100. I don't care what amount you think it is. Everything helps. And send it in or call it in and say, we want this type of programming to be available to us, and we want to support everything that's getting the gospel out in these day and time. Thank you, Jim, so much, and God bless everyone. We are an affiliate with Voice of Evangelism, yes. who is Pastor Perry's ministry. They've partnered with this ministry to be able to bring you these products, but it's Prophecies Concealed, Now Revealed. It's available, if I could just hit, he goes into, Please. he does go into Israel. He goes into the festivals, the fall festivals that are taking place right now, the Jewish festivals, how Yom Kippur is the only festival with an amazing double fulfillment, mm. how genetic manipulation and Noah's day is being repeated today, the one key that unlocks God's judgment and the visions of tsunamis that are coming. He goes on, other topics that he covers are the main triggers that transfer the world from grace to tribulation judgment. Wow. The termination of the church age, which may, which many mid and post tribulation followers never explain. What did Jesus mean when saying this generation shall not pass until all things are fulfilled? Are we that generation? Those are just a couple bullet points of the topics that he is discussing in this book, Prophecies Concealed, Now Revealed Book. It's available by calling our toll-free number, 1-888-988-1588, or you can go directly on the website, jimbakershow.com. Click on Perry Stone's affiliate site, which is Voice of Evangelism Ministry, and you can order the book directly there as well. You know, anytime you will hear from Pastor Jim Baker, you understand that the vision is clear with him. It's that the gospel of Jesus Christ is spread around the world and that you hear that the king is coming soon and that the church needs to prepare. Yeah. We see a parable where there are some foolish individuals who do not have oil in their lamps. And we believe here at the PTL Television Network that we are to prepare the churches so that they have the oil in their lamp. Amen. Believer, that is why we are here. You said it so uh, beautifully. Pastor Jim Baker has always said, we are to tell a vision. You know, I, I had a friend just the other day, I was having dinner with him and he said, uh, Ricky, when are you going to expand your ministry? And I said, well, what do you mean by that? You know, dive into that. When are you going to go out and start speaking more at churches? When are you going to go minister more in person? And I said, oh, brother, I'm called to television. I'm called to sit here. And sometimes, you know, we sit in a room where nobody's in the room. Sometimes we sit in a room where there are hundreds of you in the room. But either way, even if nobody showed up to this physical audience, I'm called to this seat yeah. right here to talk to you on that screen right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is my ministry. Pastor Jim Baker has given it to us. Mondo, this is your ministry. Marcella, this is your ministry. We have been called to be set right here. And sometimes it's not easy. As you know, in your own personal ministry, your own personal life, there are days where you say, God, I need you to give me a confirmation that I'm supposed to be right here. But friend, he'll give it to you every time. You know, Mondo, you, you put it beautifully, send me. And I believe, you know, we're looking into this time frame where we need to share this vision. Over a year ago, Pastor Jim, when I came back here and I said, you know what, I'm dedicating myself to this. Yeah. I know God has called me to this. This is where I am now putting my firm roots, foundations. He says, okay, I need you to do something for me. I said, okay, what is it, dad? He said, I need you to go and look at the television infrastructure and see what it is that right. we can be doing better. And I said, okay, so let's figure out how to do this. If anybody knows me, I'm a frugal human being. I will only <laughs> yeah, spend money if I absolutely like have it. to. Um, but it's we went and we looked at all the infrastructure. We had our team over the last year do their due diligence saying, 
every cord, every lens, every camera? What is it that we need to ensure that the gospel keeps getting preached? And they brought that back to us. And they yes. said, you know what? We've done a full synopsis of what it is. Here it is. And I said, okay, can we scrub this again? And can we get the price down lower? They scrubbed it again and again. And we got it down to where we are now at the point where it is the critical number in which we need. And friend, we know that you have stood with us 15 years ago when we started stewarding this equipment. Yes. Mondo, you know the television world. 15 years for a piece of equipment to be used in the yeah, same capacity a is a very it's long a time because the television world is upgrading every five years. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One camera, I think about 15 years ago, with all the infrastructure with it, you're talking about $50,000 per unit. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, today that number has been at a fraction of a cost right. because technology has evolved to where we can do it a lot more inexpensive, Amen. but yet to move us forward so we don't, we don't stay behind. This ministry has always been at the forefront of every change. We want to be in that change right now. We want you to be with us in that change, but that change is going to take some, you know, it's going to take money. I, I, again, I love this ministry for one reason, right? We Many reasons, like but the one reason I love is the transparency to talk about where we're at and what's happening, what's going on with us and where, where we're going to go. And listen, if we're going to go to the next level, we got to do it together. And the vision to make this infrastructure to where we can grow is going to take you to do it. This is what we want you to do. We want you to call the number right now and say, Pastor Jim, send me. I want to be one of those yeah. that can be a part of that change on where this ministry is headed, where it's going, because we've seen the battles. We have been a part of the battles, but we have seen you stay consistent with your message. We, we have seen you stay consistent with everything that you've talked about, yet I want to join that part of the mission. The mission is we got to go to the next level. We got to upgrade the equipment. There, as, uh, to be honest with you, the, some of the reasons why you're not seeing a lot of the images on time is because one of the main equipment breaks down constantly, mm -hmm. right? And the upgrade of that software, the upgrade of that machine has to have a new machine. It has to have a new upgrade. That's right. But yet this ministry, we're surviving every week. Yeah. We're stewarding it. We're saying, Absolutely. How, how, we're milking right. it all that's the way right. to the we're very end. We're putting as many bandages as possible. But the key is this. Call the number. Match Ricky's offer, right? You donated. That's you right. standing in faith. I'm going to pray about how I'm going to do this because Praise I want God. this ministry to go yes, forward amen. as well. Amen. We believe in this ministry. Yes. And I want to tell you something. No matter what happens, we're going to be here to the very amen. end. Even yes, if it takes you, being on an Apple phone yes. talking on, to you, possible, we're going to do it because all things are possible. But the number to call is 1-888-988-1588. Or you can go to the website, jimbakershow.com. I'm just going to do, guys, just like we did yesterday. Anytime that there's a need in our ministry, we sit around our conference table. We and pray. we understand that in that moment, Lord. And so I would ask you to partake with me as we enter wherever you are, wherever you're watching from. And we just pray right now, Father. Lord, we recognize, first of all, Jesus, God, that we are legitimate children of the Lord God Almighty. God, we are your children. We are your sons and daughters, Lord God. God, and you love your children, Father. You look down upon the lives of your children, Lord God, who are answering and saying yes to you, Jesus. God, and I believe right now, Father, that even as we come before you, God, we enter into your throne room, Lord, and we realize we do not take it lightly, Father, but I thank you, Lord God, right now, Father, that we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that this request, God, your word says to bring your request before the Lord. So, Father, we bring this request of the need that this ministry has, Lord God. God, the need of the equipment, Father, the need, Lord God, of those lenses, Lord God, every time one of our computers go down, Lord Jesus, every time one of the editing softwares crashes, Lord God, we go before you, Lord Jesus, and we lay our hands upon them, Lord God, because we know, Father, that you have mandated and you've called this ministry, Jesus, to preach the gospel, Father. That is the mandate. That is the calling that you place upon our father and our mother, Lord God. And then you would bring us children, Lord God, and we would say yes to you, Lord God. 
So Father, we thank you, Jesus, that you, God, already have a plan in place. I thank you, Father, that you care about souls. God, money is not the problem, Lord God, but you care about the souls who will answer and say yes. I pray right now, Father, that every person, Lord God, that you would have that would come and align themselves with the vision of this ministry, come and align themselves, Lord God, with the need that is needing to be met, Father. God, that you would begin to supernaturally speak to them like only you can, Jesus. God, we know, God, that in the natural God, I love this, Lord God, but thank you that in the natural, Lord God, this is impossible. God, but we remember and we proclaim with God, all things are possible. God, with you on our side, Father, we have seen you do the impossible, Jesus. We have tasted and we have seen the goodness of God. Amen. We have seen you, Lord God, resurrect this ministry, Lord God, and plant it on the firm foundation, which is your word, Lord so we thank you today, Father, that you are going to make a way, Lord. We trust in your word, Lord. We trust in the promises, Lord God. I love your word in Psalms, Lord God. When David says, Lord God, I have been, I am, I have been young and now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken. So, Father, you've never forsaken this ministry. You've never forgotten about us, Father. And so today with this need, Lord, we understand and we trust. God, we keep our eyes focused on you, God, and we trust, Lord God, that this request that is being made to you, Lord God, that if it is honorable and if it is a part of your will, Amen. then God, we relinquish it to you, Father. We surrender it to, it to you, Father, and we say, as we do every day, Lord, your will be done for this ministry. Father, your will is what we want accomplished for this ministry. And so we submit to that word, Lord. And now we thank you, God, and we give you the glory that you will work all things together for our good according to your riches and your glory through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I ask all of these things, all of these requests, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, if you're sitting at home and you're saying, well, how am I going to do something to save someone like Ariki or Marcella from the inner city? This ministry has been dedicated for so many years of partnering with other ministries. It's because of your donations yes. that we've been able to build homes in Moldova. It is because of your donations that we've been able to give to ministries like Troy Brewer, who yes. are in the Central America regions, in yes. our Mexico regions, in our, on our border, and they're saving young yes. girls and young boys from sex trafficking. It's because of your heaven, donation yeah. to this ministry that we have been able to support so well all of these other ministries. And it's our time where we're saying, friend, we need you to stand with us today. Pick up that phone, like Mondo said, call us 1-888-988-1588. And all you have to tell that operator is, I want to go, send me. And whatever it is, like Mondo says, we will make sure that it is put in the proper place and it is used to preach the gospel and to support these ministries doing the, uh, the work of the Lord because whenever they're going out and saving a young boy and a young girl, they're doing the work of the Lord. Whenever they go out and feed, they're doing the work of the Lord. Whenever they go out and clothe, they are doing the work of the Lord. Our prison ministries are doing the work of the Lord. Friend, you make that possible. Pastor Jim says it best. I'll say it for the next 100 years, but I'll never quite do it justice like him. But I need you to remember this, friend, that God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today.